she is going to deliver the uh, guest lecture on in innovative extension programs for fostering the cotton production in india so before we really get, get to the lecture or session i like to honor her with a shawl and memento so i request uh, dr nirmala devi to wait our uh, speaker to give a presentation to the students and staff thank you most respected uh, head of the department and uh, um, my seniors teachers mentors i feel honored as well as humble to stand in the historical av lab which has a long legacy um, before the i think somebody has joined in um, online online also sir people are there no 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 brought it <laughs> stalwarts of extension and my most respected teachers to speak about the extension program and cotton production uh, i extend my sincere thanks for this opportunity uh, to the respected uh, director odl as well as our uh, uh, professor and head department of extension um, the chinese proverb says like this if uh, if you are planning for a year you have to sow any annual crop rice or something if you are planning for a decade you have to plant trees and if you are planning for a lifetime you have to educate people in that sense this university um, educational system is world known one and i am grateful to this university i am what i am is just because of uh, i i can say my school and god's grace first then my school and uh, this university so um, it i have it has a main part in that so at this juncture i feel honored to present this guest lecture uh, in this uh, my um, so the innovative extension programs for fostering the cotton production in india uh, the outline of my presentation will be about my institute cicr and cotton extension system in india and cotton in the how it was in the earliest decades in india the genesis of cotton extension efforts in india what are the earlier extension programs and the institutional developments during pre independence day post independence period as well as present innovative endeavors and what are the challenges we are facing in extending our technologies to the cotton stakeholders and future prospects this is my institute where i am coming from central institute for cotton research regional station coimbatore like our university it has also long legacy it was started in the year 1959 the project intensification regional research on cotton oil seeds and seeds. short it was called as pircam it was merged with the indian agriculture research institute in the year 1965 as its regional station in 1967 it was converted as the headquarters for all india coordinated research project on cotton initially it was called as all india coordinated cotton improvement project aiccip and it was it in headquarters even now it has been functioning as since then it has been functioning as headquarters for all india coordinated research project in 1976 only the council started the central institute of cotton research at nagpur and uh, this station has become its regional station and this is our nagpur uh, headquarters Uh, vision of our uh, institute is improving the production as well as quality of indian cotton with reduced cost to make cotton production a cost effective and competitive in the national as well as global market and our mission is to develop econo economically viable and eco friendly production and protection technologies and this is our mandate we have two regional stations one is ours in coimbatore another one is we have at sirsa in the state called haryana and uh, i would like to start my presentation with the history of cotton because history says uh, who we are uh, why we are and uh, the way we are so um, this is the saying of uh, john manville in 1350 he said uh, he mentioned about cotton indian cotton in his book in in, in his travel book 
there grew there there means in india a wonderful tree which bore tiny lamps on the ends of its branches these branches were so pliable that they bent down to allow the lamps to feed when they are hungry and the cotton plant only yes mentioned like this and uh, the present scenario our crop uh, uh, at world level we are the largest cotton growers we are number 1 in acreage as well as uh, number 1 in production also and uh, productivity wise we are far behind that is our concern every year around 130 lakh hectares we are cultivating and we are producing 370 lakh bales and our productivity is around 500 kg per hectare when compared to world productivity it is 750 kg per hectare so it is our concern and around 10 million farmers are cultivating cotton and more than 60% of the cotton is cultivated under rain fed condition and we have special cottons also india has the specialty of cultivating all the four cultivated species we have studied four cultivated species in cotton like hirsutum uh, gossypium hirsutum gossypium herbaceum gossypium arboreum and gossypium barbadens india has the climatic as well as soil and other parameters to cultivate all the four cultivated species that is our specialty and uh, this els cotton extra long staple cotton is nothing but egyptian cotton it comes from barbadens variety it has fine quality fiber quality parameters that alone our, even though we have the uh, condition suitable for cultivating that Hmm. we are not reaching the potential so we are importing that alone from other countries uh, around uh, 10 lakh bales we are importing from other countries and uh, india has uh, three different production system this bt cotton biotech cotton it has been increasing like anything more than 95% of the area is under bt cotton this genetically modified cotton and we have uh, conventional cotton also non bt cotton also and we have organic production system organic cotton production wise also india is leading worldwide and we have uh, um, 11 states in india which are cultivating cotton we have grouped them into three different zones northern zone central zone and southern zone northern zone comprises the states like um, punjab haryana and rajasthan we have a regional station at haryana to cater to the researchable needs of all these three states in sirsa and also the central zone Maharashtra, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, and parts of Orissa also. Our main institute is taking care of all those things. Southern part, we have this Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Telangana, as well as Andhra Pradesh. Our institute is main for these uh, four states. And this is the cotton extension system in India. The Central Ministry of Agriculture, Cooperation, and Farmers Welfare Government of India is the major uh, main fact, main part in that uh, extension system. they are giving funds to our icr cacr acre pond cotton through saus and kvks we are doing our extension activities and also another uh, department is there directly under ministry that is directorate of cotton development they are also doing in association with the state department of agriculture they are cultivate they are doing extension activities and uh, state ministry of agriculture also involved in that uh, along with them we have private industries through all input industries cotton is uh, that seed industries are playing a major role in cotton extension and through csr corporate social responsibility also they are doing and non government organizations also we have coming to the point cotton it's a crop which influenced civilizations kingdoms and societies if you read the history you can very well understand all this factor since ancient times it has been cultivated in india we have many historical as well as archaeological evidences supporting that information and in cotton the production was 3.04 million bales during 1950-51 but as of now we have 37.1 million bales so it is undeniable fact that together with the technological advancements the extension approaches adopted in former years like grow more cotton to present day technology mission on cotton they had impacted the production of cotton in india um, this uh, uh, um, honorable dalai lama he said once everything you do has some effect and some impact our extension programs also had impacted the production of cotton in india so this uh, objective of this presentation is documenting the various extension attempts in indian cotton sector and their impact on indian cotton scenario 
During the earliest decade, it was doughty daisy cotton. Daisy cotton in the sense that arborium cotton. In, it is uh, believed that India may be the origin for this uh, er, er, uh, arborium cotton, Pasipium arborium. So that is daisy cotton. So it, it may be the center for uh, center of origin for that particular cotton. Earlier years, it, uh, India is known for the India in the sense together with Bangladesh and Pakistan all together. It was known for the finest uh, fabrics made of, out of this uh, daisy cotton, that muslin cloth we all know. So here the traditional daisy cotton varieties cultivated by the Indian cotton farmers like Bengal daisy, Undar, Kalala cotton, Kala cotton, Vagda, Uppam, Uppam Karugani are our cotton. In Tamil Nadu they cultivated Jayadar and uh, uh, Andhrapura. But uh, this extension of best performing practices during those days were transferred through farmer to farmer through word of mouth and seeing, his, seeing other farmers field and uh, learning by doing examples. But India had been an exporter of fine cotton fa fabrics to the other countries since ancient times. How we realize all those things means through the historical evidences and the writings of historians like Marco Polo who traveled India in 13th century, Chinese travelers who traveled during the Buddhist pilgrim centers earlier, Vasco da Gama who entered Calicut in 1498, and Tavernier who visited India during 17th century, they all have praised the superiority of Indian fabrics in the book. So the genesis of cotton extension efforts in India, it started during the Confederacy period, because that time the we all know the southern slave states, they stopped sending cotton to British, hoping Britain to recognize the Confederacy uh, on enter the war. But this prompted the Britain to turn to Indian cotton to compensate the loss from South states. So through the, because of the compulsion of British uh, company, India was indeed helped filling up the gap during the war time, uh, this uh, British cotton imports. It was mentioned in one of the books by Logan. So India, Indian history reveals that the TOT efforts executed during the colonial period to establish American as well as Egyptian cotton in Indian soil because ours is Asiatic cotton only. During that time only they introduced Isutum cotton into our uh, soil. Uh, it paved the way for extension of cotton area and cotton research and development institutions in the country. During pre-independence period, before 1947, in the 18th century, it was only arborium and herbaceum in our country. During 1790 AD, uh, to grow American cotton, they tried in Bombay and uh, Madras provinces, but it was not successful. Then they tried in Deccan, Gongan and Hubli in 1840-42 and also 46 in Punjab. This um, significant development was the introduction of Cambodia variety in 1904, even in Coimbatore also they tried. This varietal improvement work in cotton uh, in 1904, as well as the establishment of agriculture state departments in that period, these all uh, helped the former India to cultivate cotton more. And also some of the institutional developments uh, for, initiated by the government of India also helped cotton production. One such is Indian Cotton Committee in 1917 at Bombay and later that uh, now we have CIRCOT at Mumbai that was earlier called as the Central Technological Research Laboratory. It was started in the year 1924. Almost we are celebrating centenary year of that particular institute and also other many cotton schemes formulated by this Indian Cotton Committee, they all contributed to increase the production in our country. If we classify the extension program wise, during the uh, post-independence period from 47 to 69, we had uh, this 50-51, we had the cotton extension program and grow more co cotton co campaigns that was initiated by the uh, government of India. Because of that, around 44% increase in cotton area, 55% increase in production we could observe. And uh, then one more program called Intensive Cotton Cultivation Scheme, ICACS. Popularly, it was known as package program. So, because they employed field staff and they disseminated technical knowledge to farmers 
and also they gave that uh, kit um, like uh, seed pesticide appliances everything started giving in that time only because of that program around 12% increase in production we could observe and this is what how the area on production increased the average area on production cotton were respectively 3.68 million hectare during 5051 and it reached 5.56 and production was 1.3 not much increase 1.73 million bales it reached in 70 and also there was uh, impact in the yield also uh, it was 89 kg per hectare at the time during 50 40 during the independence time and it reached almost uh, 120 kg around 70 and post independence period again we had some more pro programs like uh, Uh, we the institutional developments like directorate of cotton development and uh, cotton corporation of india and our own institute in 1976 and the intensive cotton development program in the year 1979 to 80 that also had the impact and the photo first photograph that was the first agri workshop held in our tamil nadu agriculture university and after 50 years again we celebrated the golden jubilee also in our same university the next photograph and uh, uh, this uh, cci established in the year 1970 cotton corporation of india uh, it's also a government body that is uh, mainly for uh, procurement of cotton all these institutional developments they contributed to the production of indian cotton this is what how it changed in it was 7.69 million hectare and production was 11.42 million bales during 90s and yield also increased Uh, almost we reached 300 kg per hectare and uh, during 99 to 2017 we had this technology mission on cotton that is also another government of india program uh, with the idea of increasing the area production and productivity it was started and uh, then we have this national food uh, security mission on commercial crops uh, we have that was started in the year 2014 till date we have that particular program and because of this uh, technology mission on cotton also the area was increased to the tune of 12.66 million hectare and production almost 35.9 million bales during these decades productivity also there was a little change in the productivity also 489 kg we reached and uh, we have icr first line extension programs also we are implementing in our institute national demonstration project we had in 1965 frontline demonstration even now we have this program operational research pro project in the year 1975 lab to land program in 79 tar technology assessment and re refinement ivlp institute village linkage program in the year 1995 netp and naip all these programs icr programs they had significant impact on awareness and adoption of new varieties in cotton as well as uh, production technologies and uh, ipm practices in the front line demonstrations even now we have this particular program extension program uh, implemented through all india coordinator research project on cotton and we are the nodal officers for that uh, field demonstration conducted under the supervision of scientist of national agriculture research system is called front line demonstration seeing is believing and uh, yield enhancement that is the principle and yield enhancement is the motive and uh, it is one of the first line extension programs in icr the methodology what we are adopting is we are identifying the low productivity areas problematic areas and we are getting the list of beneficiaries and the plot numbers with the local village officials uh, it is mandatory we should include women farmers as well as uh, tribal farmers according to the norms of government of india and we are conducting benchmark survey and also conducting the demonstrations by the scientists at at present we are conducting demonstrations on three components one is integrated uh, crop management another one is uh, all these special cottons els cotton and seed production another one is intercropping because there is a um, blame that uh, cotton area is replacing the food crops so to compensate that this intercropping component also introduced and we are conducting the demonstration for each demonstration one hectare of demonstration the government of india is giving around 7000 to 8000 um, 
um, monetary benefit not as monetary benefit it's in the form of kind we can seed and other critical inputs we can extend to the farmers and every year we are conducting the impact analysis also because of this particular program this frontline demonstration program we could uh, achieve the yield gap at least we could nearly 20 percent of uh, yield enhancement we could achieve over the years and we have advisory services also cotton advisory services e-kapas uh, electronic kapas in the sense kapas in hindi it is cotton so mobile phone based cotton advisory services and the technology mission on cotton from 2012 to 2017 we have very successfully implemented this project throughout the country uh, through all 19 centers throughout the country and weekly advisory services we have mobile app mgmg is another uh, flagship program under icr you might have known about that mera gaur mera gaurav that is also we are doing and uh, special programs like acp tsp programs also we are doing all these said significant impact on knowledge and yield gaps of cotton extension um, farmers this is the e -kapas. we are uh, asking the farmers interested in e network to register with their local state centers by registering the mobile numbers and the centers they used to send voice sms to the registered members weekly maybe three thirty seconds messages and uh, around uh, 0.5 million beneficiaries we had during that project period 14 million more than 14 million sms we have delivered and another one is this weekly advisory even now you can find this particular page in our website in this we are giving what to do and what not to do in cotton production every week for all the states in all different languages nine different languages we are giving english and all uh, local languages and the farm the stakeholders they can very well extension officials they can very well utilize this and we have a mobile app also we have developed that is cacr cotton app that is also there and we have an international organization called international cotton advisory committee and that is in washington dc they have uh, they had a very good program and they have developed this icac cotton expert mobile app that is also in nine different languages of indian languages as well as african languages 11 different languages of africa voice sms text everything you can find in that and uh, another one is this ICAC, they are uh, um, this innovative method they are using that is virtual reality cotton training. They are documenting all the uh, cotton activities in different countries and they are training the farmers in their own office by using these VR tools. Um, that is also nowadays they are uh, doing in a big way. And this is our website in that we have a farmer's corner. And in that, we have placed all the package of practices in different languages and the schemes and uh, what are the needed uh, informations we are giving in that farmer's corner. And along, not only we have done so much activities, along with us, the private people also, they have done so many extension approaches they have followed, especially the CSR. And all the companies, seed input uh, companies, they are all using the CSR money for uh, extending the technologies to the farmers through demonstrations, through these uh, uh, training programs, exposure visits and all. And uh, Better Cotton Initiative, that is uh, 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 BCA, that is uh, an organization, they are doing this. They are also implementing throughout the country and uh, all the better cotton management practices, they are transferring to the farmers. So the, all the stakeholders, they are all doing uh, this uh, cotton extension work. But still, we have challenges for our extension programs. Um, in cotton, changing climate and its impact on cotton cultivation, changing technologies. Two, two decades back, only our own varieties and our own hybrids. But now, 95% of the area is because of under BT cotton. There are so many hybrids and we cannot, even we cannot suggest which hybrid is good for which area. Like that, so many hybrids, thousand, more than 1,500 hybrids are in the market. Farmers are also in real confusion and uh, this uh, technology transfer also, ICT, there are so many things are coming and uh, the new, new emerging problems and we have problems like uh, issues related to sustainability, SDG goals we have to uh, achieve and traceability problems we have because organic cotton production wise also India is leading at uh, world level 
and mechanization problems still even now we don't have exact proper cotton harvester for indian farmers and uh, gender and labor related issues all these things are there and we have 10 million farmers cotton growers to address all our heterogeneous uh, in various aspects and our uh, field level extension staff members uh, knowledge and uh, skill all these things are um, challenges ahead uh, considering all these things we have a dynamic director now dr yg prasad sir uh, he has initiated many new projects especially in extension Uh, recently we got a project called awareness and extension services on best farm practices for cotton farmers to improve quality yield and sustainability from cotton corporation of india we got 253 lakh rupees and one for one year through 19 centers what we are doing we are uh, using the best uh, technological options as well as best extension options both together we are approaching the farmers and our aim is increasing the yield all the best technological options and all the best both conventional as well as contemporary extension innovations Conte- conventional in the sense field demonstration farmers field schools training programs exposure visits along with this ict oriented social media oriented aspects everything we are using and we are aiming increased productivity in this area we have started in april only and it is on the way and one more project also we got that is all around 40 crores but in that uh, ppp mode all the seed industries as well as kvk our ataris and uh, cic are all involved in this uh, for one year they got 40 crores it's a mega project and uh, they have employed uh, in all the cotton growing states through ataris and kvk so we are planning to demonstrate best farm practices along with good extension practices that is the idea that is also through ppp mode we are doing uh, all these things so to conclude we had 3.4 million uh, 3.04 million bales in 1950 but now we are reach, we have reached 37.1 million bales visible changes has created it's an evidence for the effectiveness of both conventional and contemporary cotton extension programs these changes occurred in indian cotton sector during two decades due to various um, pressing factors like uh, uh, to come out with new innovations because we have so many changes uh, challenges in indian cotton sector considering the present need it is inevitable for the system to invent few more new invest uh, extension innovations to increase the productivity of cotton without losing our values ethics and legacy of the country so what we expect in the de- in future developing extension approaches that address water use input use efficiency precision farming good practices reducing the cost of production traceability branding sustainability robotics autonomous and intelligent machines to share information and labor or the need of the other students may think of all this uh, in your future for your future study also as like sugarcane cultivation in india a field tested and refined extension approach involving the industries with a novel structured buyback system also we are aiming to develop in future uh, this is what i want to uh, talk about cotton extension programs and uh, its impact on its production thank you very much for this opportunity the hybrids they are selling the hybrids but any issues uh, we have to address and the package of practices also um, they are not giving fully uh, in cotton so we are giving for bt cotton hybrids also we are doing uh, all the uh, we are recommending the technologies and uh, initially it was approved through genetic engineering approval committee directly but now all the hybrids should come through the acrips it system only so the testing also we are only doing and we are developing the um, technologies suitable for those hybrids also so in one way we we are connected with them all the time and uh, any issues farmers face in this bt hybrids they are not going to companies they are coming to departments and uh, research stations kvk only so we are addressing all those things so, so it's not con- completely out of our control and also we have niche areas like organic cotton production and um, uh, some special cottons like els and everything so in those areas uh, our varieties straight varieties they are doing performing well so we are concentrating all those things in this in these projects uh, the main aim of the project because bt cotton or hybrids also they are perform the performance and the insect resistance all these uh, issues are coming up 
and uh, seed companies are also facing problems in producing the seeds seed production is very costly and uh, because of labor issues so those things are also they are facing so what we anticipate in again in future it will be straight varieties and uh, for mechanization also uh, we need uh, some alters uh, alt alterations in our Uh, way of cultivation because for mecha using machines we need very short compa compact varieties those varieties are concentrated and developed by our public system so in future these varieties with bt support bt variety straight varieties will do the things that is the anticipation towards that goal only we are developing all the pt compact varieties and, uh, and the, that canopy adjustment system everything we are doing so it is we cannot say we, everything is under them still it's under our control only yes madam is actually this color cotton concept long back two decades back when i joined cac at that time itself they had the project but the problem with color cotton is the contamination of color cotton with the white cotton easily it will be contaminated so they stopped that program but after uh, long, again and uh, now in this decade they have started doing research on color cotton we have already released some varieties in color cotton from nagpur vaidehi uh, brown color cotton we have released and from dharwad also through acrif systems we have released many color cotton varieties so the research is going on madam mm -hmm. in isolated condition we are uh, doing uh, yes madam uh, cotton coimbatore was called uh, south indian man sister just because of the spinning mills in and around uh, coimbatore almost 1500 mills uh, was um, were there and even now many mills are there that's why we call this but uh, cultivation wise uh, cotton it was uh, 5 lakh hectares in tamil nadu earlier years but now it is around 1 and 1.5 within that only we are cultivating many reasons for that main reason is competitive crops you know, all this uh, maize and vegetable crops because of market situation and all all switch over to other crops and uh, labor scarcity another major problem in coimbatore because it's a industrial area people are not coming for agriculture activities so farmers find very difficult to cultivate cotton it's a labor intensive crop and also earlier days when farmer quit cotton because of pest problem before bt pest problem they uh, dropped the cotton cultivation but after bt also many they didn't turn to only few packets like uh, kinathu kadavu that polachi south and uh, In, uh, in that area perin i can call in and annur block these are the few and also price also another factor madam now only the farm cotton farmers are getting good price but earlier it was not sir uh, in the case of cotton uh, we found that both are very effective and the conventional very effective because this demonstration they have created very good impact sir because of the uh, maybe human touch maybe we are uh, scientists we ourselves going to the farmers field and explaining the things so that had its own impact and uh, regarding this voice sms and all uh, we have our own problems sir even the reachability this um, do not disturb system and all these things are there so uh, even though we send uh, 100 messages 50 only uh, they are reaching the farmers so reachability is a little bit poor only so what we thought instead of going for conventional alone or uh, um, contemporary alone Uh, that's what the concept i presented in that ai 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 sir integrated extension management system both conventional as well as, well as contemporary throughout the cropping season we have to give bombard the information to the farmers just uh, giving in the sowing season and coming back and going uh, after harvesting it will not work so continuously we have to give them knowledge support also and technology support also that's what we are doing in this particular project sir the new project Uh, all best management uh, technological options we have taken uh, which increase the yield and also the extension options we are in this particular project we are demonstrating best management practices and also we are conducting ffs in all over the india through 19 centers and we have pre season post season sensitization workshops in that projects uh, and uh, training programs throughout the cropping period and also Uh, we have given them to develop iec products also sir uh, information education communication products they have to develop and they have to disseminate through social media all these subjects together we are trying we are piloting that projects 
so not only conventional not only contemporary both together we are so for addressing the climate change please issues we have started many research projects anticipating this problem two decades back uh, in fact uh, this climate change one way we anticipate that it will benefit cotton crop because the increased carbon dioxide and all these things will benefit the uh, that is what we have found in our research so even now we have uh, we have started in 2000 itself this research under elevated carbon dioxide condition how the crop will perform uh, even now we are doing that research and through that we are developing some strategies if at all any change challenges we face in future we have developed technologies for that already and also we are educating the farmers <laughs> through this climate change yeah temperature increases uh, we, we are we are we have changed the technologies we have uh, refined the technologies according to the challenges anticipated challenges and we are facing in some districts so suppose say example sowing we are advising them the sowing date initially it is august 15 is the sowing date we suggested but now we have changed a little bit earlier or a little bit further like that in each technology we have made some refinements and we have disseminated also to the farmers through these demonstrations and then uh, we are the government was increasing 9% mst for cotton this year even though the near around of five crore and zero a lot of uh, handloom and power loom plant was uh, also that uh, uh, man production to consumer model that these are the problems addressing by the any innovative extension approach so we are planning for valley audition that valley chain model also we are planning i was saying about that extra long staple cotton and that is a barbadens cotton in at world level we have one, one variety called swing that was developed by our institute in 1974 that is the only variety even now available in barbadens in india but we have the good quality cotton in america called paima cotton and giza cotton in egypt those cotton only we are importing so what we are planning we want to develop this uh, our suvin because for this only companies are importing from other countries that value chain model we are planning for that also we have researched extension research project we have done and uh, we have developed a model uh, called involving the Uh, industries as well as organizing the farmers into farmers production produ FEO organization and through that entire value chain they will be involved and uh, they will be benefited these uh, companies in and around Coimbatore they all closed a uh, few companies have been closed just because various reasons not only uh, they don't de depend on our cotton produced in Coimbatore district cotton is a it's a world crop and uh, it moves here and there so uh, because of labor scarcity and all other problems they closed all these things so that also we are doing research and uh, we are developing some value chain models to address all these issues there is a problem price spoken on the market mm -hmm. there is uh, increase in the procurement price of cotton so which drastically affected the msme sector mm -hmm. so what is the main cause of problem for this one and at the same time what kind of initiative and uh, this policy level initiative the government has taken to overcome this and uh, the cotton crisis um, they might be we are producing but they might have stored uh, some reasons maybe and uh, because of the price increase and go what got uh, government is doing we have a, an institution called cotton corporation of india they are procuring during these times when the msp uh, <coughs> the uh, price goes down msp they are procuring all the cotton on msp and when msp goes up um, that we are uh, at policy level they are doing we are also working on that how to manage the um, balance the um, market demands and supply um, at present i don't know what we have developed but we are on that um, not traders it's a global market no cotton sometimes china is uh, giving all the products into market sometimes it's holding back so all these things it's a global market cotton is a global product and that decides the price of cotton definitely there will be more questions from the audience and it's a very interesting topic what you have done a very impressive and informative presentation so uh, still she is here in the icicr uh, you know her mobile number and email i request uh, 
the students to good session with scientist so now i invite dr nirmala devi to propose a formal vote of a warm good afternoon to everyone really it is a very short and sweet presentation and it is very proud to have our alumni here and i feel happy that i honored her it's really a happy moment and the lecture is very nice and it is highly narrative about the history of uh, cotton crop in india and it makes us to travel through the era of cotton crop really and um, we are thank that we know some of the real facts about cotton so far really it is highly quantitative and highly with the numerical data supportive data i wish all our research students could have an eye on it that how to utilize that available data for your uh, research purpose if you have an idea of dealing with cotton crop and the presentation is highly supported by the statistics no it is highly statistics so the facts will be useful for us to go further with your research also so i take this opportunity to thank dr usharani for uh, giving us a very good uh, guest lecture thank you